Hey guys, Justin here from Razorback Offroad. Today we're gonna to be going over the install of our cargo rack specifically designed for this Mule Model XT. So stick with me and we'll do a quick overview of all the parts and hardware and tools necessary to get this build underway. Next, we'll go over step-by-step -step process of how to get it on your machine as quickly and as easily as possible. Let's get started. So to start, we've got our tray assembly. It comes with three pieces, a left and right side, and a center support bracket. Next, we've got the left and right sides of the rack itself with an outer cover plate and an inner mounting bracket. And to get this all put together, all we need is a pile here of quarter 20 hex head flange bolts and some carriage bolts, a couple of box head wrenches, a 7 16 and a 3 8 and a ratcheting socket, again with the 7 16 and 3 8 sizes. Okay, let's get started with the driver's side. First thing I'm gonna do is gonna grab one of these inner brackets and four of my carriage bolts with the nylon nuts and go put them where I can reach them once I get the side on. Next, we'll grab the side panel and get it set in place. So before you go to set your side panel, you need to make sure that this dump support bracket is out of the way. So move that up and you'll see there's a hole in the bottom of the channel designed to fit right over that pinion support. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is hold this on kind of a 45 degree angle and watch as you fit it right over that pinion bracket and lift it up into place as it sits right over the top of that bottom bar. Now you'll wanna reach in and grab your inner bracket. As we go to install the center bracket, you'll notice that you've got one leg that's longer than the other. It's important that you get the longer leg positioned vertically in the channel. So we're gonna set that in place, line up the bolt holes, and we're just going to set the bolts in place um, and get, get the nuts started just by hand before we start tightening down the inside bolts first. It's important when you go to tighten these bolts that you start with the inner brackets. Um, we'll tighten those down and what that does is helps us make sure that our outer cover, brick, cover plate um, goes on a lot more smoothly. Now that we've got the four bolts and nuts loosely in place, we're gonna go ahead and tighten the inner bolts first. It's important that you do that so that it helps us when we go to install the cover plate on the outside. But before we start tightening, we need to make sure that the side panel is slid all the way forward and as you tighten, you wanna be lifting up tight on the inner bracket itself. It'll be easiest if you get this, if you hold the bolt in place with the carriage bolt, get that started to where it's starting to snug up. And then you can reach in here and hold up tight on that bracket and tighten it the rest of the way down. Okay, now that we've got these inner ones tight, we're gonna leave these upper bolts loose and go to the cover plate bracket. And once we have the cover plate on, we'll come back and tighten those later. Next, we'll move on to the outer cover plate. If you look closely, you'll notice it has a little tail on the end. That goes towards the rear side of the machine. So we set this in place, slide it all the way to the back to where the plates touch, and that will make your holes line up perfectly. Now that we've got our cover plate in place, we're gonna put the bolts in. These bolts are the hex head flange bolts. Again, we're gonna to wanna to put these in place and then just get them started and we'll tighten them up in a minute. A good way to tell which bolts you need to be using is to look at the hole that you're going into. You'll notice that uh, these particular holes are round, so they'll take the hex head flange bolts, not the carriage bolts. Now that we've got our cover plate bolts from the outside started, we wanna make sure we come in from the top and get our carriage bolts started from the top. So when we go to tighten these down, 
you're gonna need the 7 16 box end wrench to go on the inside of the channel and the 3 8 wrench to tighten on the outside. It can be a, seem a little tricky, but if you just reach the wrench in this channel from the left-hand side and kind of snake it over to the right bolt, it actually fits in there pretty easily. For the other bolt, same thing. We're just gonna reach through this right-hand channel hole, reach over to the other side and get that one next. This front bolt is the easiest to get to because you can reach into it right from the top. This last bolt is going to be the hardest one to get to, but again, if you kind of snake your wrench in there and reach in there and spin this bolt until that latches up, it's not too bad. Now that we've got our four lower bolts tightened up, we'll get to these other bolts and finish those out. Just don't forget to go back and tighten up the first two bolts from your inner bracket. Once you've got those four bolts tightened up, don't forget to go back and get these upper bolts with your 7 16 wrench. Okay, now that we've got all of our bolts tightened up, we'll move on to the other side of the machine and do the other side, following the exact same process. Now I'm gonna send you over to Andrew. He's gonna help you put the tray together. He's already gone through this before and done a really good job of showing how to make sure we get this tray all tightened down together in order, and then we'll get it put on the machine. Once you have your sides installed on your machine, the next thing you're gonna assemble is the tray. So what I like to start with, I like to start with one side of the tray. And what I'll do is I'll hang one end of the tray off the table a little bit. That way you have plenty of access to install your hardware. You're going to grab your, the center bracket. So this center bracket is going to be installed right on this side. And there's kind of, a, kind of a bent part in the tray here. And what you're going to do is you're going to slide it in there first. And then you're going to slide it down in there. See, if you put this in, in first, it won't, it won't fit in there. So you got to slide it in just like this. And you're going to grab your carriage bolts. And it's going to be 10 carriage bolts. And you're going to grab your your nuts here. So I'll, I'll usually like to get one started, so I start in the middle. Okay, you're gonna grab your nut. Okay, and you're gonna start there. And I usually do the bottoms first, and then I do the sides, just the bottom uh, sides here last. So once you have these all installed, Okay, you're gonna put it in through the side. And you'll notice that on the carriage, you'll have this, uh, this square portion of it. And we've actually cut this into the bracket and also on the tray. So you're just gonna match this to where you'll see the carriage bolt sit flushly against the, uh, the metal here. Because you can install it backwards but it won't sit right. So, okay. 
So once you have all the, the bolts installed on the first half of the tray, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna orient the trays. And I like to hang, again, one part of it kind of off, like so. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna install it, like I said, with the, with the bent piece in, you're gonna wanna put this in, end in first, and then this will, should slide right down into this tray. And hanging it off a little bit, you could get at least the first one here started. Okay. And go ahead and get this next one going. You may need to kind of prop it up a little bit so you can hold it up like so. And now I'll do the, the middle bolt. The middle bolt here. Okay. So once you have the bottom ones in, you gotta put the, the last ones in on the ends. Okay. And it might take some, take some shimmy in here, but it'll go in. Okay, the last one on this side. So that should be all for the carriage bolts. So now you're gonna wanna grab the flange bolts and you're gonna need three of them. There's, there's one bolt that has to go on the front of the tray and then there's gonna be two that are gonna need to be installed on the back. So we start with the front one. The front one you may need to just kinda tilt it up to kinda get clear access to it. Okay. And then install the two in the back here. And you may need to tilt it up. Just makes it easier for access. And if you notice, and I am leaving all the bolts loose, it just makes it go together a lot better. Keep the tray together or make it easier to install the tray. So now, once you kind of have all of your hardware in place, now you're gonna take your 7 16 socket and your ratchet, and you're just gonna go through, through all of them and just make sure that they're tight now, now that you kind of have them all in there. So we're gonna go ahead and just tighten everything, okay? I'll kind of flip it over just to show you. So since it's like that, so just go through and make sure all of them are tight. You're gonna also need a 3-8 socket and a 7-16 box wrench. You're gonna tighten all the bolts in the back. You do the one in the front. Okay. And don't forget the ones in the side, the, this side. Now that you have all the hardware installed on your tray and tightened down, we're now gonna take the tray and install it on the sides. Okay, so I'm going to set the tray in place with the angled portion facing towards me. Go ahead and set it on the top brackets and slide it all the way to the back until it stops. From here, we'll just go um, set all of our bolts in place. Again, not tightening them down, just get them all started and then we'll go through and tighten them all down. All 
All right, now that we've got all of our bolts in place, I'm gonna start tightening them down. I'm gonna start with these two bolts here on each side so that it will pull the tray tight all the way to these brackets. As you tighten those down, it's important that you wanna leave a little bit of a gap in between the tray and the side itself so that you don't get those rubbing together as you ride. Again, so as you're tightening these down, make sure that you're getting a little bit of a gap, an even gap along the side of the tray and the panel of the rack. Now we'll go ahead and finish, the, finish up the same thing on the other side. So there you have it. The rack is on and ready to go. Keep in mind that this specific model is designed for the Kawasaki Mule Model XT. If you're unclear about whether or not that fits your machine, go to RazorbackOffRoad.com. There you'll find a detailed fitment list. While you're there, don't forget to check out some of the different accessories that we have that fit all of our racks, as well as don't forget to like, subscribe, or comment on this video. And again, hope to see you out on the trail.